Hey guys, I've wanted to make this video for a long time. This video is about why I'm a Christian and no longer a Muslim. I have a video on my channel that I posted four years ago where I explain how I came to Christ, but in this video that you're now watching, I will answer the many people, especially the Muslims, who have asked me why I'm a Christian. I've had many Muslims ask me why I chose to convert to Christianity. But you see, the words convert and Christianity have such different meanings and definitions to many people. I personally don't like using the word convert or convert it. For example, I converted to Christianity because it gives the notion that I picked out Christianity, which I'll elaborate on in a few seconds. And even the word Christianity, I feel as though some Muslims think of Christianity as this Western religion. Like, as if it's a North American religion. Like, as soon as they see a Caucasian American or a Caucasian Canadian, they automatically label that person as Christian or assume, oh, he's a Masihi, which means Christian in Arabic. And if not that, I've spoken to some Muslims who have thought that Christianity is equivalent to Catholicism, uh, one who's a Catholic. So there are a lot of misunderstandings, and these are just a couple of them but neither of these is what Christianity means or is. A person is not a Christian based on their ethnicity or merely labeling themselves as Christian or repeating a Shahada or some prayer. A work of God has to be done. God does a change in that individual's heart and transforms them inwardly for that person to know and understand God. So. I didn't one day wake up and decide that I want to leave Islam and call myself a Christian and convert to Christianity. That's not what happened. What happened was, I was who I was, a Muslim, but God, through His mercy and grace, intervened and from where I was and being who I was, He gave me His Spirit, He gave me eternal life, and He gave me a new heart. And then my life and my heart was changed. I would like to target this video towards the Muslims, whether you're a Muslim by name or a practicing Muslim, because I believe that they have not yet understood the Gospel, which means the good news. So I'll simplify why I no longer follow Islam and why I follow Christ. I'll address it all and I pray that you'll hear it with an open heart. I've heard many people ignorantly say, oh I've read both the Bible and the Quran and to me they are both fundamentally the same. And then everyone else listening to that person would think to themselves, Oh yeah, yeah, that, that must be true. That is so far from the truth. Someone who could say that so loosely and with a straight face has no idea what's coming out of their mouth. They've probably imagined reading the entire Bible and it's just that, an imagination. You see, the, the Bible and the Quran are fundamentally the opposite and very outwardly comparable. Again, they are fundamentally the opposite and very outwardly comparable. So I mean, anyone can make a false claim like that because of what they've heard from people who have heard that same claim from other people. But until you've read both the Bible and the Quran for yourself, without any biased view, uh, I wouldn't suggest repeating what someone else has said. And People, sadly to say, they often tend to look at the outer appearance of things and never genuinely have the interest to look within and seek for the truth. So, let me start with this. The only way that God ever forgave sin in the Bible was through a sacrifice. I'll explain. Sin is a violation or a crime that is offensive to God. It is something that we've all done that is evil in God's sight and not good. It can be an evil thought, it can be stealing something, it can be a sexual act or intention that is against God's will, it can be deceit or lying, and the root of it all, at, at the end of the day, it is ultimately pride. Sin is not a subjective matter or opinion, meaning what me or you think is wrong or sinful, but rather what God righteously says is right or wrong according to his will. And sacrifice means an offering. In Arabic the word is qurbani. Now we need to know that when we sin against God, we need to know and understand that God is holy. God is 100% holy, not 99%, not 
God is 100% holy. We're not holy, we're sinners because we have all sinned. And any sin, regardless of its size, is contrary to God. It is shameful to God. It might not be shameful to us because of the way the world is and how hard our conscience has become. But God is good, pure, and holy. He does not smile over sin. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Sin will lead to death. Death came into this world through sin. Man sinned, therefore man pays that penalty by dying. Let's say you commit a crime on earth and you get caught. Depending on the crime, you might get a fine, you might get some probation, you might get some jail time. And in some states and countries, that crime that you committed is punishable by death. So just like everything in life has a consequence, death is the result of disobeying a good God. Because of our disobedience, we're separated from God not only physically by dying, but also spiritually, our soul going to hell, Jahannam in the Arabic. So sin not only brought physical death into this world, it also drew us away from God who wants us to live eternally. Um, we read this in the Bible. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. If you're sitting here listening to this and are asking yourself, you know, why does this apply to me? Or, you know, I'm not interested. Well, just know that 10 out of 10 people die. And if you die today or tomorrow or next week or even 25 years from now, in the sinful state that you're in, you will go to hell as a consequence because of the sins you've committed. This isn't a scare tactic or a method to lure you in or somehow convince you. This is reality. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you have interest in what I have to say. What matters is what the truth is. So again, the only way that God ever forgave sin in the Bible was through a sacrifice. From the beginning of time, if you go back to the book of Genesis, in the Torah, the Torah, we see God sacrificing an animal uh, to atone for the sins of Adam and Eve right after they sinned and disobeyed God. In the book of Leviticus, which is also in the Torah, uh, we read about all the different types of offerings and sacrifices that God had commanded His people to do for the forgiveness of their sins. There was no other way to be good with God. Look, praying five times a day will not cleanse or mesah in the Arabic, your sins away. Repetition can be superstition. You think that God will hear you for your many words, um, but you have not come to Him the way He wants you to come to Him, through faith and with a repentant heart. Um, going to Hajj or giving zakat or alms will not purify you. What you need to understand is God doesn't change. God is the same yesterday, today and forever. If His way of forgiving sin is by means of sacrifice and the shedding of blood, we cannot change that and decide to come to God in a different way. Read the Bible for yourself and you'll see this theme reoccurring. In the Torah, in Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11, uh, the Lord says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you, upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. Atonement means to make amends or to make a wrong right. God is saying that the shedding of blood is what cleanses us and makes us clean because life is in the blood. Um, if someone has sinned, their life is due. Now we've all sinned, therefore all of us are destined to die. But God has made a way for us to live and instead has, has a substitute die in replacement for us. Animal sacrifice was an important theme throughout the Old Testament. For as the New Testament says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. In the Old Testament, a goat or a bull or a lamb would be killed as a substitute for the sins of God's people. 
and the animal's blood would spiritually and temporarily cover the sins of God's people. Um, there were many types of offerings and sacrifices in the Old Testament, whether for intentional sin or unintentional sin, or for moral failures or physical impurities like leprosy or another disease. However, all of these animal sacrifices in the Old Testament law never forgave or never removed, should I say, uh, the sins that separated a person from the Lord. They were done as a foreshadow or a, a picture of the final and perfect sacrifice, the Messiah. The, Messiah. Uh, the Bible says, For the law, this is referring to the law of Moses, For the law, since it has only a shadow of good things to come, and not the very form of things, can never by the same sacrifices year by year, which they offer continually, make perfect those who draw near. Otherwise would they not have been seized to be offered? Because the worshippers, having once been cleansed, would no longer have had consciousness of sins? But in those sacrifices there is a reminder of sins year by year, for it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. It's impossible for the blood and sacrifice of an animal to take away sins because, as I mentioned, they were a temporary covering and they were done as a shadow or a picture of the final sacrifice. Only God Himself can remove our sins permanently. 2,000 years ago, the Messiah, as prophesied many times in the Bible, came to die as a sacrifice for the sin of the world. This is why when John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. John the Baptist baptized people with water, but when he saw the Christ, he said, This is He who baptizes with the Holy Spirit, and I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Again, we read many prophecies, divine predictions of the Christ that was to come to save people from their sins once and for all. These are prophecies that were written hundreds of years before Jesus came. And when the time came, God sent His holy and perfect Son to die on the cross for our sins and take our punishment upon Himself so that we may live. This is the love of God and the grace of God. And then He rose again from the dead, defeating sin, so that all who put their trust in Him would receive eternal life. Look, if you're a Shia Muslim watching this and you believe in the Ahlul Bayt as being the only holy and sinless people, then ask yourself this, was Imam Ali or his family prophesied or written about hundreds and thousands of years before they were born? No. Was Imam Ali or Imam Hussein's death or martyrdom prophesied that they were going to die as our substitute so that Muslims would not face eternal hell? No. Did Imam Ali rise again from the dead after he died to prove that sin had no power over him if he was indeed sinless? The answer to all these questions is no. The fact that Ali remained in his grave is proof that his sin kept him there until the day of judgment, Qayamet in Arabic. I'm not intending to offend anyone, but these are questions that need to be asked if your faith and religion is solid and concrete. And if you're not allowed asking these kind of questions, then I would wonder why that is. And secondly, you know that something or someone is truly from God if God has already written about that something <clears throat> or someone uh, prior to that, prior to them coming or it happening. And if you're not a Shia Muslim and you're a Sunni or you're neither and you simply believe in the Quran alone, then ask yourself what Allah has done for you as a Muslim for you to be guaranteed Jannah or Heaven. In Islam it's always Inshallah I will go to Heaven, meaning if Allah wills or God willing I will go to Heaven. If Allah or Muhammad or Imam Ali or Islam in general uh, was merciful and was filled with the grace of God, then you would know for a fact, guaranteed, that you would go to Heaven. Your life would be changed today. You would no longer swear or use foul language anymore. You would not hate or mock those who are homosexuals, but instead you would want them to repent, tawbah. You would not speak about girls the way you do at work or with friends, but instead would follow righteousness. Sadly, 
all these things are not sin to many of you, and nor are you concerned with that lifestyle. See, God is holy, men are common. God is forgiving, and He demonstrated His forgiveness when God Himself came in our likeness, in human form, and lived a holy and perfect life on earth without sin, and willingly went to the cross and died a bloody death, so that we may live eternally. Again, without the shedding of blood and a sacrifice, there is no forgiveness of sins. He took the punishment that we deserved. Christ was our perfect sacrifice. For those who have never heard this before, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then after his death on the cross and burial, Jesus resurrected from the grave and was seen by hundreds of eyewitnesses. The gospel, the good news is that he made him, Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. God's standard is perfection. He will not settle for less, and this is because of His nature and who He is. He will not lower His holiness and wink or smile at sin. All our righteous deeds are like filthy rags, because there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. There is they have all turned aside, they have all together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. We cannot go to God with our sinful self. The Lord Jesus said, we must be born again. This is what it means to be a Christian. Born again means to be born from above. Not anything earthly, nothing religious, nothing man-made, but to be born of God. When God gives you His Holy Spirit, your heart changes and conforms into His image and you will want to follow Him. The, the few things that I've spoken of in this video are a few of the reasons I follow Christ. God is all-powerful and all-merciful and He deals with sin and evil. He is not a God that lets sin slide by without any accountability or justice. God Himself died in human form for sin. If that's offensive to you because of the way you were raised, just like the way I was raised, then Jesus said, Blessed is he who is not offended because of me. The world we live in is a world of lies, violence, cancer, and death. But the vision that the disciple John saw of heaven was this. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. The Lord gives eternal life freely. God refers to everlasting life as the water of life. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. When you genuinely seek for the truth, you will find. And if you ask for His grace, He will give. As long as you're alive, there is the door that you can knock on, and He will answer. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. I want to thank you guys for watching and take care and God bless.